Irene Wisoga talks. Hello, everybody. I hope everyone doing really well, because my day is fabulous so far. Kate Arns is with me. Kate, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Absolutely. I'm doing fab fabulously well, Kate, because we <laughs> said we're going to talk about some exciting trends in AI yes. this year and maybe in five and ten years to come. So absolutely, it's a pleasure to have you on Soga Talks. Just a reminder for our audience, please, 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 we need your comments, we need your likes. Follow Soga Talks on LinkedIn, on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, because we do want a lot of people to see this wonderful talk with Kate, because Kate, <laughs> She's an AI enthusiast. She's not just an enthusiast. She's an expert and she's sales executive for fantastic vendor out there. We're going to talk about trends. We're going to talk what keeps Kate doing what she's doing. Kate, <laughs> let's open up with how AI you think is changing our lives, our work, our fun, and our, yes, our everything pretty much around us. Yeah. Exactly. No, you couldn't have put it better. And thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, very happy to be here. And to your point, yes, very much an enthusiast and an AI enthusiast. Uh, so, I mean, personally, and it's not just me, though, uh, I think that AI will be uh, one of the most transformative technologies uh, ever created, if not the most transformative at this point in time. Uh, even I wanted it not to be my words, but um, in the words of the CEO of Google, uh, it's going to have a greater impact on our humanity um, as a species and our development uh, than fire and electricity. So um, those are big words because, you know, fire is, you know, really helpful. So is electricity. But I think AI um, and these are some of the themes that I hope to, to talk about today will have an extreme impact on us. And it's already changing the way we think about technology, uh, even how fast it's growing. Uh, the computing power of AI is out pacing uh, Moore's law. So really challenging a lot of the norms that we've seen in the past. And I think it's really exciting, uh, the potential that's in the future. It is. It totally is. You know what? We still thinking about AI and machine learning and deep learning and wonderful techniques and technologies out there that it's only selected few have access or knowledge so can we talk a little bit about democratization? Because without that, right, it will still be available to only very selected few, and we're not going to achieve fantastic results we're looking for. So democratization, do you see this is growing this year? Absolutely. I think that that is one of the main uh, reasons AI is able to be so impactful is the fact that uh, it has now been able to be um, accessed and utilized in ways uh, that it hasn't in the past. It's always kind of seemed like a magical, maybe a sci-fi, uh, hard to reach um, technology. But uh, the solutions that are being built right now uh, have a lot of low code or no code uh, capabilities. And what kind of similar to how you would build a website might maybe on one of those applications where you can just drag and drop. Uh, similar um, solutions are being developed for AI. And that's really exciting because there are so many applications that AI can um, influence. And so to allow more and more people access uh, to that technology is going to also continue to advance us, again, in a way that will make our society uh, change so rapidly. <laughs> and that's why it's going to have a major impact because um, everybody's going to be able to utilize that for their own intended purposes. And it's pretty exponential when you look at all the factors there. You know, somehow in our minds now, AI is tied with innovation, with problem solving. How do you see AI will enhance, will enhance the workers, will enhance the customers to achieve, to achieve their goals? Mm -hmm. I love that, yes. Uh, so actually the whole reason I wanted to work uh, in AI is the innovation that's empowered by it. Uh, and the main, I think, most impactful areas this year that will be influenced by AI and the, the AI capabilities uh, are cybersecurity, autonomous driving, manufacturing, and uh, even our social dynamic with the metaverse. There's a lot of cool, exciting changes coming up there. So, uh, I mean, with cybersecurity, the more we are, uh, 
side by side with machines, the more we're connected on devices, the more complex our networks get, uh, the more obvious uh, risk is involved, the more susceptibility to cybercrime or hacking uh, is, is going to be um, re like apparent in our lives. So cybersecurity is a major application that would have a major impact on us where AI algorithms would be able to learn about um, different networks and identify which ones, if there happens to be um, a malicious threat that could come through. Um, with autonomous driving, for example, uh, Tesla says that they'll have their uh, completely autonomous vehicle ready to go this year, not maybe for a consumer to use, but they'll have a fully aut autonomous vehicle in 2022. Um, and, you know, they're not the only ones. I think GM and Ford are rebranding as uh, technology companies and they're on the same uh, trajectory of making sure that they are um, competitors with Tesla and Apple and Google in the space. Um, and then with manufacturing, that's, I work for Advanced Analytics, a mini, uh, an AI company for manufacturing. So this is my uh, sweet spot. But manufacturers actually, uh, from a survey by McKinsey, um, have self-identified or self-selected to say that in manufacturing, they see the most value. Most um, respondents in any industry that say that they've seen the most value of AI has been through manufacturing. And, you know, with the supply disruptions that we've had the past year and a half or two, uh, I don't think anyone's gone left left untouched. You know, I think it's if you're the manufacturer and you can't, you know, create your product or if you're the consumer and you can't buy a car, uh, it's touch us all. And you don't need to resort to overcorrecting with, you know, increasing your inventory, warehouses, whatever the case may be. AI solutions um, can be used in a way that will empower manufacturers to have better control over their demand, have better uh, control over their inventory, have better insight into their quality and predictive maintenance when it comes to their actual production. So there's so many applications there that can completely transform manufacturing. And there's so many manufacturers taking on those changes. Um, but probably most, uh, I guess, and in a weird way, when it comes to society, the metaverse, I know I'm I kind of influenced by a couple of your videos on this one. So I wanted to mention it. Um, Mark Zuckerberg, I mentioned the computing power of AI is outpacing Moore's law. But uh, meta is building the, I guess, the fastest, they're going to have the fastest uh, computing supercomputer uh, this year, it should be completed in the next couple months. And that is one of the two key factors um, that is like prohibiting us from taking that ne next leap with our AI technology. Um, so the fact that they are building the supercomputer uh, to, pa impa like to power the metaverse um, is gonna unlock a lot of opportunity with that technological advancement across all industries and all enterprises. So really excited for all the work that's going into all these different industries. And it's also just very evident that that's how big of an impact AI will have across the board. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is, uh, yeah, there is also the concern about explainable AI. You know, the leaders concerned, customers, public, you know, everyone is demanding how they derive to come up with certain outputs, how the decisions will be made based on the recommendations that the AI is making in all the industries you mentioned. So if there is bright future there, we will have a little more credibility and a little more yeah, trust to AI recommendations, you think? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it depends. Uh, in short, I think that we're naturally skeptical as humans, right? So, uh, you know, everyone was afraid to use their thumbprints maybe on an iPhone to unlock it. And now we have facial recognition to unlock our iPhones. So those are uh, examples of AI where maybe we've been a little bit confused or uh, skeptical or nervous about um, what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, and when it comes to explainability, you know, I think that's a really great question. It's um, probably something that's a learned trust, I think, over time. I, I do think there's a big gap in trust in AI. And uh, I think you have to see it working uh, before you trust it. But the good news is, is it does work. I mean, at least uh, hopefully most of the time. I know, I know there's obviously 
a lot of a lot of areas where AI has failed. But um, like anything else, we have to learn how to evolve and adapt to those changes and um, make sure that our our legislation though like is keeping up with these changes and keeping up with uh, these innovations because it is um, important to be skeptical sometimes, especially when it comes to uh, a technology that's advancing faster than our organizations can even keep up with adapting it. So um, I think that when it comes to explainability, uh, there's different variations and levels, um, but I think it's something that every AI company should aim to provide some insights and some explainability um, to make it safe and um, allow people to trust. You mentioned work. You mentioned jobs, so why don't we move into workplace? Because it's changing. The future of work is not going to be what we thought 10 years ago, even five years ago, right? Where do you think AI is helping already? So everywhere, it's hard to nail down on one point, but I don't know. And for example, when it comes to the restaurant industry, uh, there's even robots that can cook food. Uh, and, you know, there's people who are skeptical, well, I want a chef who is more of like an artist to be to be preparing my food. And while, you know, the chef can still be involved and have the uh, expertise over um, what the robot might be cooking, the robot has the expertise over the temperature of uh, whatever it's making. So if you're making something that's really hard, maybe in a bakery situation, uh, they might have an advantage to maybe the chef themselves, you know, it's, it's, it's less about replacing people and it's more about working side by side and using these tools like um, just something to boost our own abilities and our own intelligence or our own uh, just automating, taking away tasks that uh, they do better than us. Machines can uh, do things that are really hard for humans, like multiply, you know, 10 uh, digit numbers by other 10 digit numbers in seconds or one second, uh, which is really hard for me to do. But um, they struggle with the things that we find kind of easy, maybe um, to differentiate, um, I don't know, uh, a dog and a cat if it's not been trained to do that. Right now, we're at a place where AI is um, good at one thing, but we haven't gotten to a place where they're general. Um, but when it comes to work, uh, we're just using them as a tool. The workplace is going to shift a lot. The, the environment needs to shift a lot, I imagine. It's kind of similar to maybe when the internet came out and, and people started using computers, you know, certain jobs went away, but that doesn't mean that, you know, there won't be more jobs created as a result of AI. In fact, in the metaverse, uh, they're literally hiring people in the metaverse to um, show up to stores in the metaverse uh, just to be there. So you can get paid per hour to like be at a store in the metaverse. <laughs> Uh, the point being is there's going to be where there are gaps that are created, there will be opportunities that are very critical to fill. Um, it's just a matter of adapting to the change. Absolutely. And we're people, we don't like change. I mean, some of us, you know, we kind of like the way things are in many ways. I'm not speaking for everyone, but just to take the best human side of us, right? The creativity, the ingenuity, empathy, empathy and emotions. Okay. With all the advanced experiments we see out there with robots reacting almost like humans, right? They're not only dancing, they seem to be compassionate. They are more and more learning our behavior. And yet, you're absolutely right. There are so many people needed to teach those robots. Because for some right. people, it's still a big mystery. So can we demystify a little bit that AI is not just good or evil out there? This is a tech that we have to work so hard to make it useful. So what, what are your comments on that? Again, where is in this world, you yeah, humans with robots. <laughs> Right. So that's like kind of what makes me laugh. I mean, we're so far away from uh, AI thinking like humans, you know, we're kind of on the first phase of our AI journey, uh, where we can train AI to be really good at chess, but just because it's really good at chess, it doesn't mean it knows anything else. Um, and it's not that it, it knows it naturally and can think for itself at this point. And I think we're very far from that um, happening anytime soon. 
But uh, yeah, it's just like um, a calculator. Calculator has a lot of algorithms already, you know, uh, programmed into it. So you're using programs. It's all math. It's not a human. It's not. It's not thinking for itself. It's just math at this point in time. Um, so yeah, I guess just thinking about it, you know, as something that can train itself on data and forecast solutions. I think one major, um, maybe one thing that would be um, important for us to be cognizant about is, you know, when we are training any type of AI, especially when it comes to uh, potential consequences, maybe on a social or cultural level, it's important that we are cognizant of our biases or anything that's negative that could be learned from humans, because we also have you know, uh, some negative qualities. So, um, but no, it's just math. It's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> it's just going to learn from whatever we teach it. So we have the control still. No, it's just math. It's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> it's just going to learn from whatever we teach it. So we have the control still. <laughs> Good, good. Let's send this ma message out there because, again, a lot of skepticism and, frankly, fear, fear still, right? Let's turn into some positive. You mentioned supply chain before. We've mm -hmm. all seen 2020, 2021, right? All the major disruptions. So can you spell out a little bit what kind of efficiencies, what kind of really positive AI is driven in a in number, in number of industries, including supply chain? You mentioned manufacturing. So where do you see this fantastic progress out there? Mm -hmm. So it's actually, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's exciting that there are so many companies taking on AI to solve their supply challenges. Uh, and it's, it, yeah, it'll, cro it'll impact every single industry where supply chain is relevant, which is most. Um, and many of them are getting on board and that's just going to make everything better from a, like a consumer point of view. Uh, you'll actually be able to buy a car. Uh, you'll hopefully won't be a victim of, you know, the, the uh, skyrocketing prices when there is no supply. Uh, if you're a manufacturer using AI, um, say you can identify that. Um, say you're an electronics manufacturer. Maybe you're making, um, uh, you're in printed circuit board industry and you're making a wafer and you learn early on in the process that it is going to fail down the line and it's very expensive to continue to continue to process that um, whether it's the material used or the uh, energy used to identify that early on uh, and scrap it or rework it uh, you'll get to push a lot more product at the front end of your production line to meet your production demands uh, and you won't run out of the material in the meantime before you end that production in order to get that supply. So, um, and then when it comes to, I mean, even COVID tests, I mean, I think if the government was able to take a hold of this, uh, they would have a lot, they'd see a lot of benefits in their resource management. Um, AI can help take data across a supply chain and pinpoint um, and forecast demand in ways that our current traditional forecasting um, models don't do because AI uses current information and our uh, traditional forecasting models use past information. And before COVID, uh, our world was very different for consistently, like more consistently, and it was easier to forecast based on the past. But with evolving information, we need evolving models and that's what AI can provide us. Absolutely, absolutely. So can we jump into some customer facing applications? Because when I, we know virtual agents, they were huge before. And now with pandemic, with post pandemic world, it's only growing. So fantastic new companies coming on market, you know, because of maturity, maturity and uh, uh, new use cases that can be added to AI customer facing platforms. So where do you think we're going with it this year? So already, I think that there are like, yeah, to your point that this space has matured a lot. I, I went to the AI conference in New York in December and I got to uh, see a couple of these companies uh, firsthand. And I, like, I guess to your point, it was a bit of like a culture shock, you know, I'm seeing this uh, AI human like AI uh, talk to me. And so um it, it's funny because I'm like, this would be way better than the automated, you know, 
uh, messages on, like I'm waiting to select an option on the menu that doesn't exist. I'm trying to tell my phone or that, that you know, uh, I guess uh, voice, AI, whatever the case is on the other end of it, I don't know what it is, but to, to connect me with an operator and they don't understand me. So I think this will make a lot of, um, it'll ease up a lot of tension when it comes to getting what you need when you're a customer. Uh, it's like your answers will be, um, your questions will be answered much more efficiently and it'll be a big time saver. Um, also, a lot of the struggles that you have can be mitigated by AI on the back end. Um, but I think AI is getting a lot smarter and understanding the consumer. Uh, same within in the metaverse, AI is going to be understanding who we are, what we like, just in the same way that Facebook algorithms and Google currently do. Um, a lot of AI is happening in the background that we're not aware of, but it's learning us and making our lives easier as consumers. Um, and it's only until it doesn't work that we're aware of it. But if it's working, we just, uh, we're, we're happy and um, allowing it to do its job. But it's just in this year, I think, especially there's so many companies coming out that will um, change the game of that customer, at least the customer service, the frontline customer service interactions that we're having. You mentioned metaverse few times. Of course, you know, many of us linking AI progress and maturity of the technology, availability and low cost of entry, right? With all the uh, metaverse uh, promise out there, because those to me very much interconnected and the way yeah. we socialize, the way we shop, the way we entertain and the way we work. You know, you mentioned events. Imagine that those events with avatars around the world, right? Where again, AI already learning our preferences, but at the same time, making our experiences optimized. So this is exciting. Where do you see metaverse and AI kind of converging, if you do? Totally. And absolutely, they're um, kind of dependent on each other, or at least I think AI is an enabler of the metaverse. Uh, Zuckerberg even said that uh, in order for the metaverse to be what I guess his vision is, uh, for it to be your meta, uh, is, is his vision, it's going to take a lot of um, innovation and from hardware, software, it doesn't really matter across the board. And um, in order for that to be achieved, AI is going to need to come into play because it's just so complex and the amount of data that's going to be collected in the metaverse is profound. And that's why they need a supercomputer uh, in order to accomplish that. Um, right now, as far as maturity and, and AI goes, I was trying to come up with an answer that might be more uh, to the point, but I think there's um, different, different uh, ways you could look at it depending on where we are in our AI journey. Um, there's about, I guess, three major categories of like AI caliber, uh, ranging on, you know, uh, the first one is very very good ai at one task that's like your phone when you're you know um looking up directions on google maps they're using a lot of ai ai algorithms um to let you know the traffic in real time or if you are driving and um you need to understand pretty much there's so much ai in in cars but <laughs> there is um Right now we're really good at uh, utilizing and training AI that is good at one task. In order for us to get to the next stage, which is AI that thinks like humans uh, and can be good at all tasks humans are, um, equal caliber to humans, we have two major barriers in the way. One is computing power. Uh, the other is how do we train a, a computer to think like a human? So. We're at least getting, we're making um, progress on that first point. And we have a lot of progress to go on the second one. Um, and the last AI phase is uh, AI that is a super human. It can think way better than humans. It can make decisions way better than humans. And yeah, that's very far down the road. But as far as this first phase that we're in, I think the adaptability is, is showing that um, AI is becoming more mature there's so many innovations that still are happening so technically it's very early on in its maturity but again the rate at which it's being adapted and growing um, just shows that it's on its way um, but still very very early on and where we are 
um, in terms of the potential overall. Can we leave our audience with few takeaways? We mentioned a lot of trends that AI is going to mature and that we're going to see and exciting to be part of. But uh, can we kind of close a few trends, few trends you want to highlight in, as takeaways? Mm -hmm. Sure. So I think on a, on a technology level, uh, cybersecurity um, is going to be, a, it's, it's going to have a major impact in our cybersecurity considerations. Um, being able to adapt AI there, as well as with autonomous vehicles, um, pretty much uh, critical that we get that one right. And the industries that are, or the companies that are making progress there, uh, as well as the metaverse, have lofty goals this year. So uh, you can expect to see, hopefully, them come through and pull through on the, those goals. Um, as well as manufacturing. That's uh, an industry that is going full, full uh, speed ahead to integrate AI into their organizations. Um, also as a, as a individual, if you have a job um, and you're a little bit of, like concerned about uh, what AI means for your own sake, um, understanding more about it and uh, looking for opportunities where your skills will fit Working alongside AI, uh, empowered by AI, I think is a really good place to go. Um, and overall, I think that AI is going to just become more and more accessible, which will continue to um, expedite its uh, growth and the, the technological advancement <laughs> that uh, we have been just waiting to see. So I'm excited. I hope that we see the first uh, autonomous uh, ship across the Atlantic and um, see the supercomputer and all of the benefactors that uh, Meta makes. But um, overall, I think it's something to be excited by. And if any of this, you know, makes you happy uh, to look into it and um, maybe you'll find something that is, uh, you, can, you can hop on the, on the uh, bandwagon for um, in this AI transformation. You know what? Excellent points. Excellent points. I cannot leave this talk without exciting some of the non-technical audience members out there, because still there is this perception you have to have a PhD to work with AI. You have to be a computer science major. I know, Kate, you have engineering background, but for those who don't have engineering background, and I'm talking about uh, writers, creators, uh, video editors, lots of lots of people we need to create content around AI, around new technologies, telling the stories. So what could be your message out, with, out there when people kind of reluctant thinking about, hey, you know, technology is really not for me? Same thing about the internet. Everyone uses the internet or mostly everyone. So just um, think of it as a tool and it's the amount that it is becoming more accessible uh, just means that it'll make it easy for everyone to use. Uh, if you're in marketing, Think about lead gen. It's uh, going to be able to just be your buddy in your job and make you smarter and uh, more efficient at making decisions. Beautiful. Kate, thank you so very much for this talk today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. I, I hope that I um, gave some good insights, but I really appreciate your time and I uh, hope to talk to you again soon. 